Greetings, fellow ANTS users. This is the third in a series of video tutorials dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of using the open source data visualization software called ANTS. In the last video, we ended with an example of how to save ANTS scenes and then load the exported CSV file back into ANTS. I briefly mentioned that you could open the CSV file to see how ANTS stores attribute data. And in this video, we're going to go through several exercises to explore the relationship between values stored in the CSV file and how they affect the associated 3D objects in ANTS. To follow along, you'll need a copy of the ANTS software and a spreadsheet editor. If you don't have Microsoft Excel, free options include OpenOffice or Google Docs. Check out my previous tutorial if you need help downloading or running ANTS. Let's start with the most basic example possible. We're going to save the default scene in ANTS without adding any objects. Open the application and press the K key. This will export every detail of the scene to a CSV file in the ANTS directory. Back in the ANTS directory, find the CSV folder. Once we're there, it will be easy to identify the CSV we just exported because the file name will include a timestamp from the moment you told the software to save the scene. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Open Office application Calc to open and edit the CSVs. Many of you will likely have Microsoft Excel already installed, and the programs are nearly identical in their functions. With Calc, however, you're going to see this text import dialog when opening a document. If this is the first time you've imported a CSV, make sure the settings are correct. In the separated by section, we want to have only the comma option checked. Without that turned on, the data won't import correctly. As you can see when I open the file in Notepad, it's just a series of values separated by commas, hence the file name, comma separated values. I'm going to complete the import process and examine the first line. Notice how the layout is structured. Across the top are columns for every one of the state attributes exported from ANTS. In total, there are 94 state fields, far too many for me to go into detail about here but there is a resource available for users who wish to identify the function of each column. Check out the supplied ANTS software manual in the ANTS docs folder. Appendix section B2, which is about 38 pages into the PDF, has a list of all the state fields and a short description of what each concerns. We will spend time discussing some of the more important state fields so that you get a solid understanding of how ANTS operates. I've gone ahead and hidden all the other fields we won't be discussing to make it easier to focus. As I mentioned before, all state fields are labeled in the first row. Starting below this are the rows for each of the individual node objects in any given ANTS scene. What you see here represents the default objects for a scene without any pin objects. You may be wondering why there are any rows listed here when the scene has no pins, but in fact, an empty scene does have objects. To understand this, look under the type column. I've inserted a description field as a visual aid. First off, zero is exactly that, a valueless attribute. It's here as a placeholder, as are all the values in the first row. This is actually very useful when you need to reference the default value for any of the state fields. Just look to the second row. This row will always be created when exporting a CSV from ANTS, and will always contain the default initial value for any given field. Below this, we have the numeral 1, which signifies that this node is the root camera. Cameras in ANTS are the eyes with which you view the scene. Navigating with the mouse and keyboard moves the camera's position, and you can have multiple cameras in a scene. In a way, they are like bookmarks for your field of view within the ANTS program. Every camera object is designated in the CSV with a type of 1, but the first camera is considered the root camera, since it is your default starting view when opening the new instance of ANTS. ANTS is configured to have three other cameras placed by default at strategic points in the scene. Here you can see I'm cycling through the four default cameras by first selecting Cameras from the HUD and then pushing the C key.
Down the line on row 7 is the root grid node, designated by the numeral 6. There are two types of grids, the primary grid and the secondary grids. In addition to the grid lines, a texture map may also be applied to the grid. The primary grid is locked to the origin and cannot be translated or rotated. This provides a fixed global reference point. Watch as I create multiple grids in an ant scene. This is accomplished by clicking the HUD to switch from pin to grid, selecting the create function from the toolset, and then clicking and holding the left mouse button while pushing the N key. While in the grid mode, I can switch to the texture tool and change the background image of any grid I click on. This is actually cycling through bitmaps that are stored in the Ants Maps folder of your Ants directory. We're going to kick things up a notch now and look at how a pin object is recorded in the CSV file. Very quickly, I'll open Ants, create a single pin object by using the Create tool and clicking the left mouse button and then saving the scene by pushing the K key. Opening the CSV, we can now see that there's an additional two lines below where our previous pinless scene ended. These nodes have the type value of five, designating them as pin nodes. Remember the pin object I created? It's actually a combination of one pin and one torus object. We can see how this is represented in the CSV file under the branch level and parent ID columns. The root pin is not a branch, so it has a zero. But the second torus node is a branch of the root pin, so it gets the designation of branch level one. It's also the child of the root pin, so in the parent ID column it receives the ID of the root pin, while the root pin has no parent object, so it receives a zero. With this basic introduction to pin object structure in the CSV file, you can begin to understand how other attribute values are recorded, like the size, shape, position, and color of the object. In the next video, we'll go into more detail about these attributes and play with the values to create objects in both the Ant software environment and the CSV. Thanks for watching.